And now back to Insights on Leadership and Life with your host, Roberta P. Welcome back to Insights on Leadership and Life. We are talking about the impacts of family on leadership and success. And I'm your host, Roberta Pickett, here with Martha Perez, John Stetler, and Jason Mulford. Thanks, you guys, for being here. Thank you for inviting us. You are very welcome. And I, I mean, I think all of you guys are just perfect for this topic because of what you do with your work, but also in your personal lives. Um, I, I really, to me, you are successful leaders and, um, and good people. That means to me... You probably have good families. I know you. I know you a little, a little bit more about that. So I know that's so important. So when you think about families and success, um, you know, there's. I think success has a. Sometimes there's a lot of emphasis put on success. I always in life. wonder. What, what does that what mean? What do you call success? Yeah. What does you know, that mean? Is, is it, it because you have a lot of money in the bank? Yeah, or is it because oh, is you have it, the big title? Right. Or, <clears throat> you know, to me, being successful is being happy. Happy with the people that you are around with. Happy for the things that you have done in your life. Happy for the gifts that you have. And that shows, I My think, life, again, what you, you know, teach your children and your family has been that's what you share to to you that's when when you talk about success they get that i believe but what am- my my employees are like my family i spend we spend more time together, together. than they do with their own families yeah. you know so i always um Say, well, I think you're sort of uh, a mother hen. Um, yeah, yeah, just a little. <laughs> but it, it is important to love each other. Yeah. Uh, you know, they always say, you can't make friends with your employees. Well, no, not really friends, but be able to communicate and be able to have a friendship within the business. Yeah. But then they also know. I let them know. You know, they know who's, who's the, the boss. boss. <laughs> <laughs> this voice is not here for nothing. Trust me, God gave me this voice for a reason. <laughs> what other definitions of success are there? Jason, what about you? Uh, in my family, we've been blessed in many ways that we're able to serve together. And my wife and uh-huh. I, we had a decision to make when I came home. We came home from my honeymoon in 2011. Mm-hmm. And I asked her, do you want to? You want me to go back to work and make a six-figure income and you never see me, but we'll have things, we'll have material things. Or we can do this together and start an, an organization where we serve others and we do what we love and be together all the time. And she's like, that's easy. Let's just be together and do this. So we've been blessed in the fact that it, that mission has been successful. It's growing. It's continuing to grow. It includes our entire family, what we do. Um, there's also struggles with that. Oh, yes. Because we're always at work. Yeah, yeah, it's hard to separate things. It's hard then. to separate things. Yeah. Hard to create boundaries. But, but so for you, there's the success of um, serving and, and seeing the fruits of that service mm-hmm. around you. Yeah. And the, I'm with my family. I have a, we have a good family, good core family. We pray together. We eat dinner every night together. We go to church together. Our daughter is being raised by both of us together. We show her love. We're cohesive in our decisions. We rely on each other. We expect different things. And if you're one of the things we learn in some of the marriage things we go to for, to the church is there's just this one area we always come back to is is uh, communication. Without so you have expectation without communication equals Little conflict. Chips. Little chip starts at home. So if you have all these things in place. You can avoid the major conflicts and the little things that come up. And you can overcome them. You can be resilient in those things yeah. and do it and together. And it still keeps a sense of humor. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. laugh. Be positive, you I know. I see John has a sense of humor with his uh, <laughs> yeah. Eeyore tie and yes. Tigger. And, uh, yeah. So a sense of humor is... Goes a long way sometimes. I, that's, it a does. lot of times. It really a does. Lot of times. <laughs> if we can't laugh at circumstances and at ourselves, uh, I always life think would be difficult. There's a sign in my house that says, "Don't take yourself so seriously. If you can't laugh at yourself, I'll laugh at you." <laughs> <laughs> that's good. 
So a little sense of humor is a part of it. <laughs> I, I think, that. talking about success, though, I think that um, that my wife taught me uh, with the work that she uh, does with special education students and the effort that they put in to working with the students. And I asked her, "What's the what's the ultimate goal?" She said, "The ultimate goal is to help the children achieve their fullest potential." And we have no idea what that is. Mm -hmm. the, the limitless, uh, the, or if there are limits, unknown limits to what can be achieved. And when you are working toward that vision, then that's the long term, that's success. That's interesting because it's true. I mean, as humans, what do they say? Less than 10% of our brain. Mm -hmm. So what is the other 90% that is untapped. What's we it have, doing, sitting around? Yeah, we have no idea. daytime soap operas or something? Uh, I hope not. <laughs> I, what, my experience has been when, you know, when I tell somebody, um, do you want to take over the restaurant, you know, or help me more, or this. No, they don't want, some people don't want to have more responsibilities. They, they don't want to, little chip is about wanting to do the impossible to get it done to accomplish and to yeah. accomplish what you want to accomplish and a lot of people they want their weekends off they want their three days off on the road they want you know this and that and they are not willing to give in their time and it's you know. interesting though if you ask them what is success to them so you know what I, I, they might say do you know what they have told me yeah just being home with my family so That's their a, happiness. Their so, happiness. so I, I always believe that it, it depends on what you call leadership or what you call successful. Mm -hmm. You know, because we all are happy in different ways. You know, I remember my kids. Um, one of my big things is I wanted to graduate from college. That yeah. education was really important. Well, only one of my three <laughs> ended up with a college degree. And yet as I grew, I realized there are many roads to success. Oh, there yes. are many ways to get, a, um, to be accomplished in life. Satisfied. And satisfied, fulfilled. And mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. really what it's about, right? Being there was, fulfilled. There was a little article that I read, talking, a guy was talking about his, his son who even at the, the sixth grade graduation when all the students were saying what they wanted to be when they grew up and they, it was the doctor and the lawyer and the, the this and the that and his boy came up last and, and he smiled and said, I want to be the one that paints the white stripes on the parking lot. <laughs> <laughs> if you're the best white stripe painter, painter in that's, the country, at, that's always, success because that's, yes. yeah, that's what you saw as Satisfaction. If it puts a smile on your face and a you and know, it warms your heart and it contributes to the benefit. Yeah. And I always benefit. teach my children that no matter what job they had, to be proud, to do, a, be proud of what they did and to do the best that they could. Absolutely. It doesn't matter whether you are cleaning bathrooms, whether you are sweeping floors, whether you are doing beds or whatever it is that you end up doing, mm -hmm. be proud of the job that you do. I think we were all told, taught that. Uh, and it, it, the, one that, the one that I remember is on the farm as a kid, we borrowed a, an implement from the neighbor to do mm -hmm. some haying. And when we were all finished, my father went to town and got some parts because we had broken a couple little pieces, which they always do on that particular piece of equipment, but he bought more than what we broke. And I asked him, why are we replacing, I understand replacing what we broke, but why are you replacing stuff that we didn't break? He said, because you always give it back better than you got it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You always do it better. Boy, that's you true. always do it better. That's right. If that's something we can teach our kids and our future generations, we'll... We'll all be better off, especially in our old age, give, right? <laughs> give more than you received. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> so how are good habits formed then? I mean, that sounds like a, something that your father was trying to instill in you. Is that a... 
I think it's the I think it's having the important somebody in your life that you can listen to and respect and and model. And in in many cases it it's your parents. But we're dealing with kids where they may not be in their home with their parents and they may be in foster homes or they may be in group homes. And when they're working with us, uh, one of the things that we're trying to do is make sure that they find somebody that's their go-to person. So somebody even though they can it's go not a family that member, trust, the, uh, that will do the things that we would have said in the, in, in the ideal circumstances, family would have done it. But if family is, dis, is disadvantaged for any one of a variety of reasons, uh, and that's a whole nother, whole nother story about all or that. Or dysfunctional, but, let's put it that but way. The, um, the idea is that you find somebody who can help become that safety net under you. And ideally, you've, you've got dozens of people that you can go to for, for different issues. And, and I do too. But I, I didn't have that when I started. Yeah. I started with one person who taught me, when you have a problem with this, go here. When you have a problem with this, go here. There's all kinds of people to help you. But if you don't build that, then you end up on your own and if you had not very good guidance to begin with, you don't have that much of a chance for achieving what you could call success. So it's support. It's creating that community and that support structure around you. We are wrapping up this evening uh, with... Darn it. I know there's always more to say, but thank you all for being here. Thank Jason you for Walker having us here. John Stetler. And thank you so much. Perez. And thank you all for watching us here on Insights on Leadership in Life.